to start with, um, I have a few a aliases that I'm using. But you can see here, so instead of always having to type git, uh, git commit, instead of always having to type a git commit, all I have to do is, is type git ci. The same st for status, uh, br for branch. Um, this one that, uh, now that I see it, I wanted to show, I wanted to send around. But um, if, you, if you Google um, for nice, git nice log output or something like that, um, you should get, uh, you should get something some something similar. So um, don't be surprised if I, if a lot of times I will just say git st, which would be um, a git status. So okay. okay. Um, I think let's let's just start. So um, close the door. Just, so uh, for starters, um, my scenario of the day is the planning of a birthday party. Alice wants to plan a birthday party for her for her friend uh, Charlie, and she. She uses uh, Git to keep track of all the things that she wants to do. So she creates a Git um, a Git repository. Um, I've also um, configured uh, the name locally as Alice because otherwise everything would would show up as Holger. And because we we're talking about collaboration, I want to be able to distinguish between different things. So you don't you, you usually won't do won't do this once you have done this in the global config, you never do the, need to do this again. So we want to create a birthday. Uh, we want to create a plan a birthday. So, um, so I'm creating a, a file to keep track of it. Um, things to do. What do we need? We need uh, a date. We need a place. We need guests, and we need to invite. And we need to get invitations out. And after doing that, um, Alice decides that she wants to bring her friend Bob in. So uh, let's. No, oh, sorry. Let's first. So this so she adds the birthday MD. By the way, MD is Markdown. I'm not going to talk to talk about it. Um, it I find it quite useful. Uh, and she And she and, and she now has um, the file in her local repository. Um, then she wants to create uh, a PDF file of that birthday. So if you look at it, there's now a PDF file of this birthday party. Um, but if we now say git status, we notice that the, the git notices that there's a new file called birthday.pdf that is not under version control. Now the thing is we don't need to put this under version control because we can always create it with just a single command. Um, and and to basically convince 
Git to no longer bugger, bugger us about the birthday party, what we do is we create a new file called dot git ignore. And we say that everything that ends in PDF should be ignored. So when I now say git status, you notice that the birthday of PDF never doesn't show up anymore, even though it's still in the, in the directory. But instead, there's a new file called .git ignore that git notices and says, well, what do you want to do with this file? And you might also put .git ignore into the ignore file. So you could, you could just say uh, here, you could just do this. And, and then everything would be fine. But what I'd like to do more is uh, to put the ignore file under version control as well. Because that way, if, if we want to ignore files here, PDF files here, we probably want to um, ignore PDF files everywhere we want, where we want to do this. So this is, for example, if you, want, if you do uh, a Fortran source code or something, then you might have Dot, object files that end in .o, module files that end in .m, .mod. You can just say, um, ignore these files. They're not relevant. Um, and everyone that um, copies your repository will also get this ignore file automatically. Now, by the way, um, if I wanted to now add the file that was um, ignored, it would actually tell me, hey, you want to ignore this. Are you really sure that this is what you want to do? So you, that basically tells it, tell, uh, that's the way of Git telling you, well, either you might want to take it out of the Git ignore, or you can use minus F to force this file in, even though it's in the ignore file. Well, that's just the side, side show. Are there any questions about the ignore file? Okay, so let's continue. Alice wants to cooperate with Bob on this. Um, so the first thing that she needs is a remote, um, re a remote repository. Uh, there are two very popular um, choices. There are two popular choices. Um, one is um, One is um, GitHub. Um, GitHub is free for public and open source projects. So as long as you don't mind anyone downloading you, the stuff you create, um, you can use GitHub just fine. You don't have to pay anything. Um, that doesn't mean that other people can contribute automatically, can, uh, can automatically can muck things around in your repository, but ev all of them can download everything you've done. Um, Bitbucket is, has a slightly different monetization technique. Um, for if, if you're working only in small teams, then Bit, Bitbucket is free, and, and it allows you um, it, it allows you a small number of private repositories. So repositories that are not open to the public that, that other people cannot just look into. Um, but then if you work, want to collaborate with more than five people, then you have to start paying. Um, I personally like um, GitHub more, but if you work on, so if, if you work on software that, um, where, where, where you have some sort of licensing um, terms that tell you that you cannot share the code, then um, you need to have a private repository. So let's create let's create a GitHub account. Okay. So 
So we get a username and um, an email address and a, pa and a password. And then we can create an account. So you can, we say, okay, we want uh, the, free, the free account. And um, as you can tailor this a little bit, they are what they do, but I'll just skip this step. So now I have um, the dashboard of a new user in GitHub. And I can, I can just say start a project. Oh, please in verify your email address. Do that. Do this on my phone. So I don't want you to. Hmm. Okay, um, I didn't get the verification. No. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'll go into my, I, I'll go into my proper uh, account. So I'll keep, I'll keep working on here. So I still say start a pro, oh, no, sorry. Settings first. And the settings, SSH and GPG keys, there's something that you really want to do. Uh, um, you want to add your SSH key. Uh, are there any questions what an SSH key is? Um, SSH key makes things much easier because it means that you don't, with, together with an SSH agent, means that you don't always have to authenticate yourself every time you upload something to the cloud. Now you can do it without it, but then you always have to type in your username and your GitHub username and password every time you push something up to the, to the GitHub repository. So you guys, in this case, you would just say um, add SSH key. Um, you give it a, a name. No, um, and you can just, you can literally just copy paste this file, home directory .ssh .pub. copy and paste it in here. And of course, here it tells me the key is already in use because um, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's right this one here. But I strongly recommend you do that. So let's go back to the dashboard and we start a new project. We call it Charlie's birthday. Birthday. Two. Uh, Test repository. Yes. Sorry, Holger. Could could you just go back and, and show that file with the SSH key again, please? Yeah. Um it's home directory dot SSH slash ID RSA dot pub. You have to have created this first. Um I Strongly recommend that you that you look it up. Uh, that's um, with an SSH. Uh, how to how to create an SSH key? Okay. Yeah. And how to use Thank an uh, SSH uh, agent? You use basically SSH key gen. Um, to create this key, and then you use an SSH agent. That is a little bit different on, your, on, on any, any computer to set up, but it makes things a lot easier. Okay, thank you. So um, anyway, so we say this is, should be a public repository. If we try to set, select it to private, it, tell, it will tell me, hey, you need, to, uh, you need to give, you need to pay us money. But public is, uh, public is fine. 
we don't need a readme. Um, we don't need a git ignore because we already have this. We don't care about a license, just create a repository. And that's the first step. So now there is, now GitHub knows about the repository, has made uh, room for it. And we can, it tells us here what we can do. So we can, um, uh, we can create a new repository or we can, um, we have a, an existing repository. So we can just copy and paste these commands here. And that's it. Now, if we look at the repository up here, we can see that the birthday file has been added and we can work on it. Now to add another collaborator, you go to, in, this, in the repository, you go to settings, then to collaborators. And then here you can use, set the username of the GitHub person, or the GitHub username of the person you want to collaborate with. So you need to ask them how that is. Aiden, I have, I have here a nice one. I hope he doesn't mind. <laughs> and, um, Basically, he, he gets an email saying, "Hey, Holger wants you to Holger wants you to cooperate with you uh, to cooperate on this project," and that way he gets uh, Aiden also gets right permissions to this um, remote repository. And, and now, what is what would what would the other person have to do? They go to clone or download here on this button. And they get uh, two options. They click and clone with SSH or with HTTPS. You see that that's a slightly different um, thing down here. Um, I prefer SSH because that way I can use my SSH agent to, to automatically log me in. But of course you can, if you, if you don't want to, if you're happy with, um, with uh, having to supply your username and password and every time you can just also use HTTPS. Um, Bob is going to uh, copy um, uh, to use SSH. So he just copies that. It says git clone and then that link. And then the directory that he wants to push it in. And you can see he also has all the files now, and that is a complete a complete uh, Git directory. He has he has all the changes that he wants. So let's so oh, let me quickly so. so this is you you wouldn't you wouldn't need to do that. I just want to make sure that um, that we have the difference between Alice and Bob here. So, so let's say he thinks about the date. So he's he makes he makes this note. Uh, escape, save. Okay, he has made now made this change. It's in his log, but it's not yet. Um, but it's not yet on the on the repository. Okay. So for that, he would use Bob would use the command git push. So push 
pushes um, all the changes that he's made um, up to the remote repository. And if you now look at the, um, you now look at the file, you can see that the that his suggestion has been added to the repository. And of course, also if Alice wants to import these changes, she would use git pull to pull them back down. So let's make another, let's have uh, Alice make another change. So he sh Alice makes it ma makes this change. And pushes that back up to the back back up to, to GitHub. And at the same time, Bob also makes a change. And says about the guests. He also pushes this up, and Bob will now get an error message. He says, fail to push, uh, to push up. Updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you, that you do not have locally. That means that Git has noticed that the remote repository was ahead on what, Git ha uh, on what Bob had locally. And so in case it doesn't want to try to merge it automatically on the server, instead what it tells Bob to do is pull down the changes from the remote repository, merge them, and then push them back up. So that's exactly what um, Bob does. He says git pull. And in fact, there is now a merge conflict on birthday.md. We talked about merge conflicts before. You can see here, there's one line. This, this, this is in one version. This is the other version, separated by this line with the equal signs and these two hints about where it, where it comes from. So Bob needs to fix this merge conflict. Now you can see that um, you can see that that a change has been made. And now uh, Bob can push this up, and now GitHub's version will correctly identify um, the changes that both of them have made. Okay. Um, are there any questions?
sorry, just just another one, Holga. The these commands are, are the same whether you use Bitbucket or Git um, Hub. Yes. Is that, is that yes. correct? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Commands. Uh, Bitbucket um, supports uh, not only Git but also Mercurial, which is very similar in its syntax to Git. Um, quite frankly, if you care about the differences between Mercurial and Git, then um, this seminar is not for you. You know, you know enough about it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but yes, the, the, the Bitbucket is um, just as convenient to use as, as GitHub. They also work, walk you through each step just like, like, just like GitHub does. Um, of course, uh, the, the URLs would look different. So if, if I look at... If I look at here, this here is of course um, um, a, GitHub, uh, a GitHub address. And if Bitbucket, there would, there would be something uh, bit, bitbucket.com. But um, the commands are exactly the same. In fact, if you don't, if you don't want to either GitHub or Bitbucket, and you have a server lying around somewhere, you can set up uh, a Git server yourself. Um, and then you can, pull, you, you can decide yourself uh, who should get access to what. Um, but I don't suggest this at this, at this stage. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, that was actually most of what I wanted to talk about, and we're only half an hour. Um, I don't want to talk about forks um, and, and pull requests. I'd, I'll, I'll probably just mention them. Um, if you want to contribute to um, an open source project, but you don't, you're not on a collaborators list, you can still cont contribute um, in this way. You can fork a project with this button up here. That will, that will basically make a complete copy of the repository um, uh, in your personal, in your private, in, in your GitHub account. You can even fork from, from, you can even fork between Bitbucket and GitHub if you want to. And um, then, because you now have control over this, over your, your, your version of, the, your, of, your fork, of your fork, of your copy of the repository, you can make the changes that you want to make. And then using a pull request, um, you can basically tell the original um, uh, owner of this thing. So the, the guy who has the main project, you can tell him, hey, look, I made this change. Maybe you're interested in it. And that way he can, he can compare, um, he, can make, he can look at the changes that you've made and if he likes them, he can just merge from your repository into his, back into his. Um, I'm not going to talk about how to do that in detail because by the time you need that, um, you will probably for, have forgotten everything I've talked about. Um, just notice, know that fork and pull requests have to do with um, between different um, repositories uh, of the same software. Um, yes. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay. I underestimate the time that it would take me to go. Okay. Um, okay. Yes. Do you want to discuss branching because it can be useful when collaborating? Um, sure. Uh, I have I have talked about branches uh, last week, but um, yes, um, it can be useful. Uh, basically, the the objective of having a branch is to kind of try out certain things without having to, um, without breaking everything. 
So that's that's the original um, that's the original uh, that's the original um, idea behind it. I mean, we did we did this last week with the with the wizarding world. Um, what? So I've now I've now created and checked out uh, a local branch. You can see that that um, Bob has now this additional branch in this repository. Um, I can even create a new file. Um, So if you look at the directory, there is now this readme file. But if I switch back um, to the master branch, then actually the readme file gets deleted um, because it's not part of this branch. And if we, um, what was it called, my branch? Then it's back there, and we can even uh, push. Okay, uh, yeah, I should probably talk about this. Um, you see, origin master git uh, git push origin my branch. Um, these are default names for the remote and for the branch. So what it what it has now done is um, you look at the report remote repository, um, I can look here and I see um, not sure why it gives me this. So um, it, it allows me here to switch between the master and the my branch and it tells me that, that the readme.md is only in um, my branch. By the way, this readme.md um, this is the default file that will be displayed down here. So that's why, why the text that I just wrote uh, appears down here when I switch on the my branch. Now, here was the, you see that I said uh, gish, git push origin, and origin um, is the default uplink, uh, the default remote repository. So if, if you look at the, at the, if, if you look at the remote repositories, they get automatically set if you, um, if you'd clone a repository, the origin gets automatically set to where you clone from. Um, whereas in Alice's case, um, there was let's see. there was this line here. I don't know why the, for some reason my, um, my, uh, so it, I, there was one of the lines of code um, that was added, that was used, was this um, git remote at origin. So, um, origin is the default uplink for your for remote repository. Um, you can add other remote repositories for the same thing. Um, this is useful if you want to, um, if you have more complex uh, software where different people work on different parts of the code and you don't want to, to compare everything, um, usually, I, usually you will only have one. Um, 
but because my branch now is on the on the origin um, re remote repository, Alice can now also pull this branch. Um, and now, oh. okay. Okay, don't know why it show, didn't show it. So there, now it's here. The readme file, the readme is here, and um, yes. Yeah, so this, what you if if you do run, uh, um, if you do want to make major changes, like you want to completely rewrite, like what one of your subroutines does, or how one of your subroutines operates. And you don't want to uh, break the working code. What you would do is you would create a branch of of your of your master um, branch, of your main branch, and then you can work on this. Can, then you can work on the on the new uh, subroutine. Can test it. If it takes a while, you can always merge the changes that happen to the master branch into your into your local branch. And then, oh, but only when you're finished, when you think, okay, now it's now I'm happy with the result, then you merge it back into the master branch. That's that's usually how it's done. Any more questions? Does anyone wonder what the difference between origin master and master? Because Git will create uh, what you call remote branch, which are the set of the branches of this name on the remote, but they're not necessarily in sync with your local branch. So you can see in the logs that here, for example, origin master is a uh, one uh, commit where the master is pointing at another commit. So your local master branch is not pointing at the same commit as the origin master branch that is on GitHub. So origin master will be the branch on GitHub and master is your local branch. So uh, to recap, um, Git, both GitHub and Bitbucket are really convenient to guide you through the setup process for a remote repository. Um, they're free to use uh, in GitHub uh, for open source software or open source projects. Uh, for Bitbucket, um, if you work with small teams, up to five people, they are, they're free. Um, if you want to have a private repository on GitHub or a larger team on Bitbucket, um, then you need to pay money. Um, to, um, to work with remote repositories, you need um, the pull and the push command, the clone pull and push command. The clone command is the first one that you use that makes a local copy of the remote branch well, technically, the push command is the first that you use because you hook up the if you if you hook up the the, the um, if you set up the new repository, the first thing you do is push all the things that you have locally onto the remote repository. Then anyone uh, for at the, the first time they want to work with it, they can use the clone, um, and uh, they can clone this. They can clone the repo remote repository, which means that they, that everything gets set up so that they can work with there as well. And then you need to pull, to pull stuff from the remote repository onto your local computer and push to push the changes that you've made 
uh, up to the remote repository. And if you're collaborating with someone and they they've sneakily done a commit uh, a push before you do, um, since since your last pull, then you have to pull again before you can push. Okay. Um, I think that, that that's it. Um, yeah, it's about 10 to 2. And um, we'll see each other then. We'll see most of, I'll see most of you in Wollongong next week. And this will be the last seminar for this year. We'll come back in February roughly um, and see what's going, what, what, what we'll do then. Have a good trip and yeah, see you there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.